Linux project. Where the heck has it been? Really? I have no idea. I launched it three months ago. I had said, hey, I'm gonna do a deadline, and it didn't work out. I've been really busy. I have no excuse. But it's here. I have a week full of nothing to do, and therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and try to complete my Linux project. For those of you who are new, or who have no idea, or forgotten about the Linux project, I created the Linux project for myself so that I can get a little bit more of an in-depth knowledge of Linux, and so that I can start using it. I did end up updating my Linux project from the original launch video. I uh, decided that there was a lot of different mini, little mini projects were just not good. They just, they didn't need to be there. Uh, so I have updated it. There's a link in the description below for those who are interested in following along for the Linux project. So Linux is used in cybersecurity and I do need to be losing Linux a little bit more, more so than I have, than uh, my Windows usage, but uh, in order for me to do that, I must learn Linux. So, without further ado, this is the Linux project. Level one, kind of, section one, whatever. If you guys don't know by now, I am using the stationx.net Linux training bundle course uh, for most or basically all of my training for this project. StationX is a platform I always recommend, and they offer a Linux bundle that I'm using right now. The link is in the description below for any of those who are just interested in, in StationX and uh, the, what training I'm using for this course. A few months ago, I ended up completing the first course of my Linux project. It's like a Linux beginners or Linux for beginners course. Now I'm on about 50% of way through a course called the Practical and Hardening Security Guide for Linux. And it's talking about how you can harden uh, and ensure proper procedures for your Linux machine. It's pretty interesting. Really all I'm trying to learn from here is how to secure your accounts in Linux. And I'm trying to learn how to work with IP tables, which Jason shows. So I'm going to go ahead and get through this. And after that, I can actually already start on my little projects that I have. All right, so I have finished the practical hardening and Linux security guide. Now, the next step for me is to set up this Apache web server. It won't take that long, I don't think. And I'm going to create this Apache web server, create some uh, firewall rules and use netcat to see and test the connections and see if how this kind of works with IP tables. And then after that, I got to do an open PGP key pair. I, I don't really know, like, I sure, I, I know what it is, but I never used it. So next is trying to figure out how to set up this Apache web server. Oh, yeah. I have finished setting up my little web server environment. The project was to basically create a little web server uh, or a virtual host that would perform web server type functions. And in order to do this, you have to open and close certain ports. So with all of this in mind, I went ahead and applied some basic IP table rules to my web server. I found this article online, a link in the description will be left below. And basically it outlines how you create a web server with Linux um, when it comes to creating little IP table rules or how you set up the firewall for a web server uh, with IP tables. And it walks you through how to use IP tables and just the overall basic structure. So I followed along in this article and I set up some basic rules for myself. So I perform an IP tables dash L, which will list all of my open uh, created rules or customized rules here, or default rules for that matter, um, you will see that I have certain ports opened and certain ports closed. And really the premise is just to get a basis behind how I work with setting up and deleting and creating different IP table rules. I created a little web server environment. I opened up SSH from a certain source IP address, HTTP and HTTPS traffic, because of course this is a web server. And also I have opened up FTP and both 
for port 20 and 21. 21 establishes a communication or a connection, and then port 20 is when they actually transfer the data. And then I have DNS or TCP and UDP. For the FTP, by the way, um, it's not very secure to have all of it, the source uh, and the destination address both opened, uh, but I just did it for simplicity's sake. Now, in order to test my little environment here, all you have to do is perform a netcat function. So if you do uh, nc netcat dash v, and let's say you want to connect to this web server, all you have to do is specify on which port you want to connect to. So let's say we're trying to connect to the SSH. You perform an SSH or a netcat, and you can see that we have connected and verified connectivity with netcat. Now we can also do this for port 80, which would be HTTP, for DNS, which would be port 53, and you will see that we have it all connected. So a very basic, easy introduction project um, I really just wanted to get familiar with setting up some basic rules and IP tables, and who knows, maybe I use this further along in the journey. So now I have to figure out what the heck open PGP is and how to generate a key pair. Let's do that. All right, so I have finished learning a little bit more about PGP, or stands for Pretty Good Privacy. I read a few articles online regarding just general PGP, and uh, I went ahead and generated my own PGP, or GPG, which is an open source standard of PGP uh, keys on Linux. So you basically just write in GPG dash dash keygen, and then you walk through the, the steps And once you have finished with the work, working through the steps, you basically are able to have generated your key. So one of the issues that I was struggling with was how I export these keys and so that I can actually use them out into an email client. And you know, this article that I have behind me, it shows you that you can use some sort of graphical interface tool, GNU Privacy Assistant, but I couldn't seem to install it on CentOS. This is an article addressing the Ubuntu side. So I tried doing a lot of research into it and perhaps I'm the one who's in the wrong, but I couldn't figure out how I actually apply these keys out into uh, real world practicality or how you can actually use them. That is the Linux project level one and project two finished. I have one more level slash project to complete and I'm done with my introductory to Linux. Really the power of Linux uh, resides within the terminal. You can do so much within the terminal. Uh, so many things that I, I didn't even know you could do and so many things that I haven't even touched. And on top of that, I also covered or learned some of the security sides about how to harden your Linux machine uh, for personal use. The projects were pretty easy, uh, nothing too complex. Just learned a little bit of IP tables about how IP tables works and also generating a, a PGP key pair. That wraps up the Linux project. Um, if you're looking to follow along, there's a document in the link in the description below that kind of outlines what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, so I have one more level and one more project and I'm done with this. So until the next video, I'll see you soon. Wow.